In this video, we're going to create a container and some boxes that fit into the container. And this is actually for a moving project. So it's a pod, if anybody's familiar with pods, you know, from the US, it's basically a, a modular moving storage container. You fill it up at home, they load it on a truck, and then they ship it to wherever you're going. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to create a container, create the boxes of the set sizes, and then see how those boxes might fit in the container. And I thought that would be an interesting thing to do in FreeCAD for several reasons. One is um, not particularly the modeling, as it's a bunch of boxes, but more how you move things around in FreeCAD, um, how you can create things, separate models, how you can organize those models, uh, and that type of thing. So I think it'll be an interesting video, particularly for beginners, just to see how you can move things around, manipulate things in FreeCAD. So without further ado, let's take a look at it and see how we might do this. So the first thing, we're going to um, create, and we're in part design, I should say. And let me just show you my FreeCAD version. So I'm on version 0 0.20. This is the uh, development version. I strongly recommend it. It's very stable, works very well. So uh, let's do that. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create myself a file and then I'm gonna create a part and then I'm gonna create um, a body inside that part. Now this is gonna be my container. So I'm just gonna rename it to container. And as many of you know, the way I work is I'm in millimeters, but as I live in the USA, the containers are all measured in feet and the boxes are measured in inches. So I'm going to show you how you can use those dimensions, even though I'm working in millimeters. So first thing I'm going to do is a sketch on the XY plane. And I am going to constrain my um, container with a centered rectangle, it's sim simply a rectangle. So I'm using the centered rectangle, which is that feature that's new in uh, 0 0.20. So if you're in an earlier version, you won't have this one. You'll have to just do a regular rectangle. But if you're in version 0 0.20, you can use this centered rectangle, which is great because it plops it right in the middle. And then you have your, your uh, rectangle. And now what I'm going to do is dimension that. So I'm going to give that a dimension. And I know my dimension here is eight feet. So I'm going to highlight that. Notice I'm in millimeters. I'm just going to type eight. And the abbreviation for feet is FT. When I say OK, it creates it in millimeters, but it's now an eight foot container. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. And this one is actually seven feet seven foot so that makes it nice um, and constrained and the full size and these dimensions now i don't have to think about anymore i'm going to close that and i know this thing is eight feet tall so i'm just going to do a pad and i'm going to tell it that that is eight feet so that's the size of the first container and of course, if I now put boxes inside it, you're not going to see those boxes. So one thing we can do is we can create um, a view that is in wireframe. And in that wireframe, now I can see inside this box. And later on, maybe we'll, we'll cut out the box. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to work with uh, boxes within boxes using wireframes. So now the next thing I want to do is to create um, another body, which is one of the standard boxes. So if we take a look at the standard box dimensions, we can see there's a 12 by 12 box. So let me just pop that up. So here we can see there's a, a what's called a book box, and it's a 12 by 12 by 12 box. 
Um, these boxes are actually U-Haul boxes. I bought all of this set, so I have all of these boxes. So we're going to create a box for each one and see how that looks. So the first thing I need to do is to create a body. And I'm going to call this body small box. Oh, sorry, book box. Because it's a book box. And I'm going to rename this body to container just to keep it clean. So now we know what we are. OK, for the book box. One thing we want to do when we draw this box, if we're going to move it around, it's going to move from wherever the origin point is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a sketch again on the XY plane. And we will create our box using this rectangle. And we're going to put the first point right on the origin. And then we're going to create the box from there. We'll give it a dimension here. And remember, this is 12 inches, so I can say 12 inches, inches is that symbol. And it'll create it <clears throat> in millimeters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and this and make them equal because it's a 12 by 12 box. I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to pad that 12 inches. And there's my first box. Now, here's a tip. When we want to move that box, um, we don't want to use this original box. What we want to do is create a clone of this box and move that around. And then we'll hide this original box so that we can create subsequent clones. So I'll show you how to make a clone. This little sheep guy over here is a clone. So you just click on there, and it automatically creates a, another body. And then I'm going to rename that body and I'm going to call it book box, book box. When I do that, it's going to realize there's already a book box and I'll make this 001. So there's my book box, 001. And now if I want to move that box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, edit and transform. And notice that this is now on the corner of the box. That's important if we want to rotate the box. Um, where we want to move it to, we now can move it from that edge. I'm just going to put it here and put it here. So when we're translating, what we do is we, we grab the end of whichever direction we want to translate it in. And we can slide it along those edges. And we can move it in the Z direction. Or we can use this guy and rotate it. And now it rotates based on this 15 degree rotation increment. And it's moving, translating uh, based on a one millimeter movement, which basically means I can move it anywhere I like. So I'll put it back where it was, slide that guy over there, and then just accept that, just click OK. And now my box is over here. What I want to do with this box is basically just hide it, because I want to keep that if I need to clone more than one book box. So let's hide that. And now let's create a folder to put the book boxes in. So if I just create a folder, this folder is a group. I'm going to rename that group. I'm going to call it book boxes. And then I'm just going to drop this guy inside the book boxes. So now I have one in there. If I go back here, I can clone that one again and rename that. I'm just going to call it book box. Notice it's 02 now. And then I'm going to drop that into my group. Pop that open. Now I have a group of book boxes. And I'm going to translate this one. We just do a transform. We move him over here. Remember our original box is there, but it's switched off. I can put it next to that box. Now if I want to make sure that's lined up properly, I can look at it from the top view. I can look at it from the front view um, and just make sure that my box is sitting exactly where I expect it to sit. I'm going to say OK to that one. 
and there I have two book boxes. So let's look at the next one. The next one's going to be the small box. <laughs> it's a weird size. It's 16 and 3 8 inches by 12 and 5 8 inches by 12 and 5 8 inches high. I don't know why. Okay, so we're just going to create the exact same um, body for the small box. We'll just build from here. So with the small box, I'm going to create a sketch be on the XY plane. I'm going to create that box in exactly the same way. Click on that point, go up over here, give this a dimension. And it was 16 and 3 eighths, so 16.375 inches. And I just realized that my mouse pointer and my keystrokes um, wasn't running properly. So from now on, it should be fine. So we're going to give this a dimension on this side. And this one, highlight all that, is 12 and 5 eighths. So it's going to be 12.625 inches. And we'll close that. And we'll pad that, and it's 12.625 tall inches. And we're going to do the exact same thing with this small box. We're going to create a clone. So just select it, hit the sheep, rename it right away so we don't have a mess. I'm just going to call it small box. Right away, become small box one. Edit, transform it. Notice my uh, origin is right here on the corner. That's where we want to keep it. Bring it over here. So now we have several different boxes of the same. I'm going to just turn off that small box. And we'll leave that box right there. If we move the original box and then we clone it, our origin moves and it'll be offset and it makes any kind of rotation. And you can see with these odd shaped boxes, I might want to rotate them. Um, it makes that rotation a bit weird. So we're going to do the same housekeeping here. We're going to create another folder, which is a group. And we're going to call this one small boxes. And then we're just going to drop this small box in there. That keeps it all nice and neat and tidy. And if I want to create a new clone for a small box, and we'll transform that one. Bring it over, just bring it over to there. Ooh, what happened there? Let's just say OK to that. I selected the wrong one. So let me go into the small box, say edit, let's say placement, and reset the placement, hit apply, say OK. I didn't want to move this box, I wanted to move this box. So let me just rename this small box. Small. This is the one I actually wanted to move. So I was highlighting the wrong one. That's why when I moved it, you couldn't see the box moving because that box is hidden. So now if I move this one, we should be back to where we, we were. We can put that over here. I'm just gonna leave it there and bring it up next to that one. Say so, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna pop that small box in there. So just to clarify what I did, I moved this box inadvertently. If you go into edit and placement, you can see where it's placed. Once you moved it, these will change. You can reset that, you can apply, say okay, and then that box will be back where it should be. And if I turn that view back on, you'll see that box is back where it was. 
So the important thing with this is to sort of take your time and organize everything the way it should be organized. So let's look at the next box. The medium box is 18 and 1 8 inch eight by 18 by 16. Why they bother with the 1 8 inch, I don't know. But just for grins and giggles, we will stick with it. So let's do that. And we are going to create another body. And we're going to rename this one small, uh, sorry, medium box. Medium box. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a sketch on the XY plane. And we'll just bring that back in the middle. Zoom in there a little bit. Let's create our box. Okay, now I missed that point, so that's not good. I need to zoom in there, hit that point, hit that point. Well, it's coincident. I, I missed the point as I went in there. And then I'm going to give this a dimension of 18 and 1 8 inches. I'm going to give this a dimension of 18 inches. I'm going to close that and then I'm going to pad that and it's 16 inches. And again, I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to clone it. I'm going to rename it straight away to medium box. And notice it comes out at medium box 001. And then I'm going to transform it. So move it over here. In this case, I'm going to lift it up, transform it that way, or that way. And we can see it's overlapping a little bit, so you probably wouldn't want to do that if you were if you were loading this container. But I'm just doing it for illustration purposes. And then we're going to create another group, and we're going to call this group medium boxes. Then we're going to drop this medium box right into the medium boxes. And then we want to add a large box. So the large box is 18 by 18 by 24. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again. We're going to create a body. Rename that large box. Sketch XY plane back to the middle. Draw my shape. And if I so the last time I missed this, what what you need to do is when you go to that dot, you watch the different constraints that pop up. Here it's gonna fix to this line. Here it's gonna actually be coincident with that point. So if I click that, we should be right on that point. And then this one is 18 by 18, so I can just do 18 inches. And I can say that one and that one are equal. Close that. And it's 24 tall. And that's my large box. Just double check. 18 by 18 by 24, yeah. So that's my large box is now squared away. And I'm going to turn that one off. And I'm going to clone that one. I'm going to rename this body to large box. I'm going to transform it.
nicely done. Create a group. I'll rename that. Large boxes. I'll drop my first large box in there. And then the final one is my extra large box. So another body we're going to rename extra large box. And we're going to do a sketch. This one is 24 by 18 by 24. I don't know who came up with these sizes, but uh, yes, it's, I guess it's based on the sizes that people have used over the time. Uh, U-Haul is one of the biggest moving companies in the USA, so I have to go with what they say. So 24 by 18 by 24, so let's do an 18. What's that? Pad that. 24. Nice. Turn that one off. Make a clone. Rename my clone. Make my group. that box inside. I'm just going to put it in front there for now. Okay. So now I have all the types of boxes and they're all lined up there. What I can do is I can close that part to hide my original um, boxes. If I want to create a new one, I'm just going to go back in here, pick the one I want to create and clone it. And that will create a new one for me. Now, if I'm in here and I select this box, how do I know which box I've selected? So I select this box, double click it, I'll select the whole box. So I can see that this is, um, a clone and it's in book box 001 and so I know this is book boxes right here if I open this there's my book box 001 so I know it's that one same with this one if I select this I can see it's body extra large box and it's clone 6 so if I open this and I open this then I can see clone six is, is selected. So finding the actual box, once you have them all here, is pretty straightforward. You, you uh, just highlight whichever box it is you want to be on. And if you double click, it's actually a little easier because it shows you that it's large box 001 and it's clone 005. So if it's a large box, it's going to be in my large box group. And there it is selected. So if I had multiple large boxes, let's create a new large box. I'm going to go in a large box, create a clone. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to rename it. I just rename it large box. And it automatically will number it to the next one, put it in my group where I want it to be. I can transform it. Bring it over here so they're not living on top of each other. Say OK. And now you can see all my boxes are sitting in my container. Now, let's look at if we wanted to see that in 3D. Right now, if I turn this wireframe off, and I go to 
my as is the normal shading that we have. I don't have any view of what's inside because it's literally one those all those boxes are inside this big box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece out and turn this into an open container. So let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our container selected. And then we're going to create a sketch. And we're going to create it here in this YZ plane. And the sketch, I'm going to use my sectional view. The sketch just needs to be a box. I'm not going to dimension it or anything. I'm just going to give myself roughly a box. The width of these walls are not really all that important as long as there's a wall there. So I'm just going to go with that. Now you could say, well, if you don't have the right width, stacking your boxes in there is going to be a, a bit of a shambles. Not true in that. Um, if it gets that tight, I probably am not going to be able to stack it anyway. So there's going to be a little bit of room around the boxes. That's that's my plan. So I'm not overly worried about that. Um, I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to create uh, a pocket. And I'm going to create that pocket in two dimensions. And I'm going to make this one... Uh, if we're eight feet and we're coming out from the middle, if I make that uh, 4.1 feet and I make the other side, we know that's eight feet, so I can make it 3.9 feet, for instance. And now if I look here, all my boxes are sitting in there. And then we can do things like we can select the box and tell it that it's some kind of random color. We can select another box, give that a random color. You know, just to give our boxes some view. And we can better see the overlaps here. So what I would do is I'd go back into my wireframe, go back to my top view, and you see the overlaps. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to transform it. And I'm going to transform it in this direction. Put it over this way. And I can align everything exactly the way I want to. Now, because I created a, a space in here, all these boxes are sitting on this line here. But the bottom of this is a little higher, so I would have to translate them all up to make sure they're sitting on top uh, and then pack them all in. Again, this is really just for illustration purposes. I just wanted to show you how we might go about doing something like this and how we can translate boxes or shapes. We can move them around. We can have multiple models in one picture and we can organize them in a way that, that we can keep everything um, easily understandable. So I can see all my extra large boxes um, and I can create new ones at any time. So if I want another extra large box, I'll just go here and I'll create a clone. And I'll go down here. I'll rename my clone. So I'll just take my extra large box and I'll transform him. And again, that's in exactly the right place. And as I said, if I want to rotate it now, it's going to rotate on that edge too. And what I would do if I'm rotating is I would change this to be 90 degrees because it's likely I don't want to put him in a, a weird angle. So I'm going to just say 90. Then when you translate, he's going to flip around the whole way. And then I can translate him across here. 
So that's how I would I would work with the boxes. So hopefully that helps you to understand how to organize parts, how to transform them and uh, move them around uh, and to view them in, in different ways like in the wireframe or I can view them in as is. You can see all my boxes and in my container. I wish loading them was actually that easy, but it's not. So if you have any comments, any questions, anything else you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment. I appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you've learned something today. If you have, feel free to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can always join our Patreon. Normally I have lots of uh, interim videos where I'm coming up with new ideas. And I also like to publish these early. So this video will actually go to the Patreons first, and then it gets published out to the public. So again, thanks for your support. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch the video. And I really do enjoy sharing these videos and, and sharing the information and knowledge and techniques that I've found. See you in the next one.